Well, hello everyone. Uh, I am Juanita and I am going to talk about the Scientific Python project and a little bit of what I've been doing with them. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I am Colombian. I am a mathematician. Uh, I finished my undergrad in Colombia. I'm also a former developer for the Spider IDE uh, for Python. Um, I used to work at Quantsite before. Currently, I'm a PhD student at UC Santa Cruz, and I am the community manager of the Scientific Python project. And a fun fact is, I'm also a singer. I, I love singing. Uh, this is my contact information in case you want to reach out. I love to talk about documentation and community, so. Uh, so Scientific Python gets confused uh, for the SciPy project. It's not the SciPy project. Uh, and it's also not the SciPy conference. <laughs> so. The Scientific Python project, um, well, sorry, sorry, okay. So the Scientific Python project is meant to support the ecosystem and grow the community. So uh, there's the Scientific Python community of developers and maintainers that use the tools in the ecosystem. And the whole ecosystem is the Python packages that we use for research, data analysis, data science. Uh, so our goal as a Scientific Python project is to unify uh, this ecosystem and pretty much get communication between the projects that are part of this ecosystem and create a joint future together. So um, one of the first, th first things that we started as um, the Scientific Python project were specs, which we call uh, Scientific uh, Python Enhancement. Uh, OK, I forgot. <laughs> but they are basically cross-project policies. And they are meant to pretty much help the ecosystem trying to find a way to do stuff together. Uh, so there's some um, like mini minimum supported versions. So the goal of these is basically if, for example, you are a person who wants to create a new library and you have no idea uh, on how to take like a decision regarding a specific thing, then you can see some of our specs and be like, okay, maybe, maybe we can do these uh, because these other libraries have been doing it before. So that's kind of like the goal of the, the specs. Um, but in, well, this short talk, I want to talk mostly about community building and community outreach, which is what I've been doing as part of the Scientific Python project. Um, why? Well, because open source is more about communicating, teaching, and collaborating than uh, it is about the code itself. Like, we all love the open source community because of the community itself, not necessarily the, the code. So, uh, the Scientific Python project is um, composed of a, community, of a community of volunteers, mostly from, from the Scientific Python packages of the ecosystem. So we have developers from NumPy, SciPy, Maplelift, Pandas uh, that are part of our community. Some of them are part of the uh, spec steering committee, which is the ones that are working currently on like writing the specs and uh, proposing these specs. Uh, and these are the core projects that like we are currently working on, that doesn't mean we, we can't include more. It's just like, this is what we are like starting off um, for our current work. Uh, this is the specs here in comedy, as I mentioned. These are the people who work on, on, on the specs. Uh, and well, the way that we want to do this kind of unifying, the first thing, which is what I'm trying to work on right now, it's documentation. So we have a website which we want it to be a central place for information and basically provide resources for many of the projects. Uh, here we have orientation for newcomers, interviews for community introductions, and some demos for problem solving. Um, we have this learn website that uh, we wanted to have a contributor guide, a maintainer guide, and a community guide. So there's a lot of resources that you can find in the documentation of different packages. For example, a contributor guide. There's a contributor guide in NumPy, in SciPy, and Maplodev. So what we wanted to do with this website is pretty much unify that um, resource to have it as like in a central place. And maybe as uh, Tim mentioned in a, in a little bit, one of the problems is like, the duplicated efforts on things. So we want to like minimize that by having like a central place for information that we can share with all the projects. Um, this is something I've been doing uh, for the scientific Python project and is trying to do orientation from newcomers. So if you're a person who doesn't know what the scientific Python ecosystem is, uh, then 
well, this is a place you will find information for. So I've done videos on like why to contribute to Scientific Python, uh, five ways to contribute without coding, and how to choose a project if you want to start contributing. Um, and then there's also these interviews that I've been working on with uh, maintainers from different packages in the ecosystem. And um, well, I like to say that this is a way of bridging a gap between the users and the developers um, of this community. Like, I, I feel like most of the times, if you're a user and you, I don't know, you use NumPy, you have no idea who is behind it. So this is a way to show people who is behind that and also show them that we're not aliens, we're normal people who have lives, we have pets, we have kids. And um, it's just kind of like a, a fun way to, to show people who is behind the, the packages. Um, I also tried this revolutionary idea of doing videos on TikTok. Uh, so this is this is a demo that I I, I did for how to uh, like getting set up your development like stuff you want to contribute. So forking and cloning a repository. This is a very short video that I posted on TikTok. This is the screenshots of it. Um, and I guess it was kind of like a way of uh, extending our community. Uh, more than on Twitter, which is where I've seen most of the communications from developers happen. I kind of want to explore new venues, so I decided to start doing TikTok stuff. Um, and the other thing that we want to uh, well promote a lot is our, our blog. So we want this to be like a central place for people to share thoughts and ideas on like the whole ecosystem, not necessarily like a specific package, but just like um, like general things. There's stuff about like the GSOC, people that have done internships on um, different packages, or like even people that post um, work that they have been doing with different packages there. Uh, and then this is the other thing that I do a lot, which is, which is social media outreach. Uh, so currently we are using Twitter mostly for, I guess, news and updates. And I think this is like a the best way to directly interact with the users and developers. I explored things like the YouTube videos that I already talked about a little bit and Instagram posts, um, which again, it's just like a new way to expand our community and find people in more places that might be interested to joining us and have no idea that this community exists and is there for them. Uh, this is like an example of a post that I did on Twitter uh, about like, how to contribute to scientific Python without coding. And I think this is kind of like the information that you would maybe uh, give to, I don't know, someone that is in their undergrad degree and have no idea that they can contribute to open source uh, and they're on Instagram because everyone's on Instagram now. So I guess uh, one of the, like the main idea why I started to do this was, well, I start, like I started thinking about the future and how like the, future maintainers of the projects that we are working on right now are people who are in high school right now, who are in their undergrads in CS right now, and they use these things to communicate. So we have to start communicating in their language if, they, if we want them to come to us and end up with like good maintainers <laughs> for the future. Um, okay, and I had a video to show you, but it's unable to play, so <laughs> let me try. Yeah, so this is just an example of what I did in TikTok, which was like different advice from scientific Python developers. And I think this is a great way to uh, just talk to people directly and get them to come to you and be part of the community. Hopefully I can play it. Okay, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, in the meantime, <laughs> If you want to be part of the Scientific Python project, we, are, we have a Discord server that you can join. We have conversations about everything there, the community, documentation, outreach. Uh, there's channels for like uh, pretty much uh, a lot of the core projects in the Scientific Python ecosystem. So if you have a question about NumPy, you can go there and just ask people for that. Um, and well, of course, we are on GitHub. There, we have an organization with a bunch of repos. There's a lot more that we are doing, but this is kind of just like the community side of things. Um, and all our social media handles. We also have a Discus, which is a, a discourse forum, actually, where we have like discussions that are more like offline kind of thing. The Discord is more like for synchronous communication. Discourse is for more asynchronous communication. 
Um, so yeah, you're welcome to join us uh, if you are interested. And that's it. Yes, you have a question. Oh, sorry. Yes, questions. <laughs> have you seen uh, LLMs pop up in your world? Are people talking about LLMs yet? Or no, no, playing? not not well. The so the the well at least for example the dis the Discord server that we have m like mostly is discussion between maintainers. So it's whether like can we merge this VR so that we can do this release. So, but I guess like. They might pop up in like some discussion that I might not be part of, uh, but not from what I've seen. But probably because we haven't made a space for it yet. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, which foundation is governance of this uh, this project. Which what? Foundation. Do you have any governance uh, body? A governance body yeah so not yet so we we actually the so the project started with uh, like a, a grant from the like it was awarded to bits the research Institute in Berkeley uh, to Stefan van der Waal and Jared Millman who are like the like the starters of the project so it, it started with a grant right now we are part of the uh, non focus sponsored projects um, and I guess yeah that's that's how we've been working but we, we uh, the other question actually is similar to team. How we actually, if we run into the this LLM, large language model, uh, like a TensorFlow, PyTorch, how does that can be integrated or you know uh, together with the project under this uh, scientific Python? Well, I guess there, there's a lot of a lot of people from these like libraries that are probably working on that, and I guess uh, a good way to find like cross project like conversations would be this place because there's a lot of people from different libraries who are doing different stuff. So you might actually find people from PyTorch, uh, I don't know, and TensorFlow that are part of, of these of these community. So I guess that that, that would be my my guess. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you.